Well, it's uh, a little tough. It's probably the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Uh, I've been enjoying it for all these years. I think about it every day. I can't help it. It just automatically is the best thing ever happened to me. And I sort of go along with the flow and anxious for the auction coming. Yes, I am. And why did you decide to auction off this uh, uniform? Well, I thought it was the right time. And the money will go to my grandson's education. So that'll be taken care of, and the parents will be happy for that. If we got some left over, I'm sure we will. They give you a little vacation, maybe. You know, I'm a very good friend of Arthur Richmond, well, who has recently <coughs> passed. Now, he had a story, and I have a DVD here for you about the night before the perfect game, and maybe the two of you were out having a few toddies. Do you remember that evening? Oh, yeah. We had a couple of drinks, and I think we had a pizza pie. Yes, that's what he said. And went to bed early. You know, I didn't expect to do too much after the second game. I screwed that up, but everything worked out already. Arthur may have known something, but I don't know if he did or not. But he was <laughs> our, my, our best man at the wedding. You know, he's been a longtime friend, you know, since the St. Louis Browns days. So Arthur was an important factor in my life. In keeping with pitching, there's been three perfect games in Yankee history. David Cohn, David Wells, and Don Larson. Here's Arthur's story about Don Larson's perfect game. Another good drinker I had, I met him with the Browns when he first came up in 1953. It was a man named Don Larson. Uh, and he, I was his best man when he got married. My mom used to feed him breakfast when he was eventually traded to New York. And we were together always having our toddies, and the night before the perfect game, I said, we can't have too many tonight because you're pitching tomorrow. He says, who told you? I said, Casey told me. That's who told me. <laughs> he said, okay. So we only had four or five, and he said, could I have a pizza? I said, yeah, you could have a pizza. But anyway, he went out, pitched the greatest game of his life, and Oh, we're still very close today. Yes, Arthur said on the video you were out having a few, and he said, well, we can't have too many because you're pitching tomorrow. And you said, well, how do you know? And he says, Casey told me. That's how. No, yeah, well, Casey didn't know either, I don't think. <laughs> Who knows? It worked out well. It worked out well? Yes. And what a game that was. Here's how a perfect game gave Arthur a little clout in New York City when he needed a reservation. And when I called for a reservation at the Copacabana, they said, are you kidding? We've been sold out for three months. So I said, I got Don Larson with me. They said, if you got Don Larson with you, we'll put you right on the floor with Joey Lewis. And they did. Yeah, we did. We had a great time. Who was performing? It was, uh, oh, the comedian. Doggone, I can't remember. But he picked up the tab for us because we didn't have enough money to pay for it. <laughs> Yeah, it you was know, fun. J just to end, talking about money, things have really changed. Don't you feel financially for ball players uh, from your era to now? Well, we survived it. They're surviving it now. They're making good money. Well, they're crazy not to take it. The owners offer it. So we'll accept it. You know, it's good. It's good. A lot of legends in the room. Uh, I'm a legend in my own mind, John Cirillo. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to introduce our very special master of ceremonies for this afternoon. He has been on the broadcast airwaves for nine straight decades. Absolutely amazing. He's a New York product uh, by way of Duke University Phi Beta Kappa there. And um, wow, he's as good as he was when he called the perfect game. So here's the perfect broadcast, a, a former colleague of mine at the Garden, former voice of the Knicks, the uh, great baseball broadcaster as well, Mr. Bob Will. Bob. Thank you, John. We're here at Gallagher's celebrating their 85th birthday. They were born in 1927, the same year that Babe Ruth hit 60 homers. Now today, we'll be talking about three men who've won fame doing nothing, absolutely nothing. Don Lawson, of course, as you know, pitched this great game, 
Actually, there were no hits, so nothing happened there. No runs, nothing happened. No score. It was a perfect day for doing nothing, and yet we celebrate that because nobody else has ever done it in the World Series. The Don Larson Classic, known forevermore, is one of baseball's all-time great games, and Don Larson, of course, is a legend because of it. Actually, Don was a terrific pitcher, quite aside from that, and a hitter, and it was a thrill to call the game. And in the game, he also established something which was brand new, he made the no wind-up delivery the way for pitchers to go about it. Before then, I used to start every radio broadcast. Someone so was into his wind-up. Here's the pitch. Don would just bring the ball up chest high and let go with the same speed and unbelievable control. He got to the three and two count and only one batter during the, that World Series Classic game. It was complete control in a game that took just two hours and six minutes. Now, to make the picture complete, of course, Brandon Steiner, who was the master of nostalgia, has helped to immortalize this. Brandon, of course, deals in, in dreams and wishes and hopes and makes things which are considered commonplace actually works of art that people treasure because they bring back such vivid memories. An amazing entrepreneur in that field. Ira Levy is the agent for it, who's helped the, the picture come true as well. <clears throat> and John Cirillo has done an outstanding job in putting this show together here. There's a big announcement being made today that I know you want to hear about because every year at this time we think of World Series and we think of Don Larson and now the two are connected once again. So Brandon, if you'll come up, explain what you have in mind and I know that you'll get a big kick out of the next step in this saga. First of all, it's a, a complete pleasure. You know, we've worked with Don now probably for the last 15 years, almost 20 actually, in and out doing different things. And it's been a joy just reliving that great moment like we try to do all the time at Steiner with all the different moments. But this moment just seems to always get stronger and stronger. Always has something a little bit of something special about it. Part of it's Don, part of it's World Series, part of it's Yankees, Yankee Stadium, you know, it has all those ingredients, you know, for the perfect stew of, of a moment. Uh, for us, it's our 25th anniversary, so we're real excited at Steiner, and this is the perfect gem to, write, to be right in the middle of it. Uh, for Andrew Levy and I, uh, which Andrew probably had a lot of ways to go when he was probably deciding what he wanted to do with this jersey, is everybody wanted this jersey all over the country, all over the world, and Andrew was kind of fielding those calls and probably deciding what he wanted to do. I think it's special for us because Andrew's actually one of my first uh, staff that, we, that I worked with. Well, actually, it was just me and him. So it was the two of us really 20 years ago, or a little over 20 years ago. So it's nice for us to come full circle for this 25th anniversary. And this is really, uh, to have a gem like this in an auction, we've auctioned off a lot of things at Steiner. I mean, Ruth, Mantle, DiMaggio, the DiMaggio Diaries. I mean, we've done a quite, quite a few things uh, throughout the years. Uh, Steve Costello runs our auction site, and we've done some amazing, uh, some amazing transactions, you know. And we've seen some amazing products come through the doors, but this is definitely a gem, and will probably be right on the top. Very grateful that Andrew kind of way able to reconnect and uh, have something like this and be able to work with Don for the next uh, six months. That's going to be fun as well. And we look forward to that. You know, it's nice when you get close with a player and you kind of relive a lot of the, you know the, his past. And kind of at the same time, we're going to help him fulfill some of his dreams for his grandkids, uh, being able to kind of you know set those kids up the way that Don and his, his wife wanted to. So we're grateful and very happy to help and do that. Um, we 
got some great announcements that will be coming up in the next 30 days of some other amazing uh, collections that, that will also part, be part of this big auction for the 25th, and the auction will close December, I believe it's the 4th or the 5th. Um, it will start on October 8th, which is the anniversary of Don's perfect game. Um, and, you know, there's nothing like bidding. There's nothing like competition amongst, you know, crazy people that want something special. So uh, and those crazy people will have to have a little bit of money. Um, that would be a little bit of a prerequisite. And nothing like New York City to help bring the best of that out in people. And we'll help to obviously do that as well. And, you know, if people can't afford that, there'll be some other great treasures we're going to get from Don as well from some different things that he has signed and is going to sign and some other couple little things he has in his collection. So I'll, I guess the next step, uh, John, is Don Larson. Don Larson. So it gives me great pleasure. Bob's going to introduce Don. And first of all, I just want to say, Don, uh, Bob, what an honor it is to have you here today. My legendary sportscaster, I watched all my games as a kid growing up. And uh, I don't know if people realize how many games this guy did, but I know my entire childhood is filled with watching games that Bob did. So thanks for joining us today. Don, before we do it, this is an abbreviated version of the broadcast. I cut out a long foul balls, balls and strikes along the way. But I thought uh, I'd bring an old tape for you, so take a listen if you will. Attention. I don't know if I like it or don't, but well, it's a very pleasure. Through Andrew's help, Mr. Steiner's, we're going to have a big auction of the uniform. And I hope we do well with it. I'm sure we will. And up the education of my grandsons and whatever, maybe enough left over to take a little trip. Buy a little round of toddies. <laughs> anyway, I'm very pleased with the way things are going, and I know it'll be a success. Uh, I spent five nice years here with New York, and I enjoyed my time here. It's always a pleasure to come back and spend some time with people and other people, old friends, and make new ones. And I'm sure we're going to enjoy the weekend with the Old Timers Day. I won't be out there. I'll be rooting for somebody. I can't make it anymore out there. But it's always a pleasure to come back here, especially with this function coming up in the next few months. 
I'm sure it ain't going to be all right. I have nothing more to say unless you, somebody wants to ask a few more questions. Yeah, we'll have Don stay up there for some questions. Don, were there, was it all fastballs or did you throw some curves or change ups? In there? I didn't have two that curve. The best thing that day I had was a control. I threw it pretty close to where Yogi wanted it, and we had success. Like I say, only I had never had such good control in all my life, and I I couldn't have done it without Yogi. And uh, I made a couple bad pitches, but the defense took care of that, which is nice to see. Didn't have a whole lot of time to think about it because the game went pretty quick. Before you knew it, it was the ninth inning. I was pleased when Dave Pinelli called strike three on Dale Mitchell because it seemed like the world left my shoulders then. What did you realize was pitching a perfect game? What did you realize? I didn't know it was a perfect game until somebody told me in the clubhouse after the game. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I had the no-hitter uh, about the seventh inning. I thought there was a chance of the no-hitter. Every pitcher knows, uh, you know when it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen anyway. You don't go out to do something like that. You just work hard and, you know, sometimes things all come together and they did that day, certainly. I was very lucky and pleased. Yep. Just back to the to the jersey again. This, un unlike Yogi's that also had been auctioned off in 2010 from the game and got close to $600,000, this is actually the uniform, top and bottom, which is different. And the Babe Ruth jersey, which just sold for four point something million. Um, you know, again, that was a Babe Ruth jersey. This uniform is basically from arguably the you know, greatest moment in sports history. It was only worn for one game. Well, I wore two. The, well, you were away for the first one. You were on away uniform for the first time. You could have worn the jersey. No, no, uh, no, no. It was only worn in a game one time. Well, on a batch. Four days I wore it. Correct. In a game one day. I was at a game that day, I was 10 years old, and I don't know if you, do you remember, I think Bob mentioned this when he was broadcasting, but from the seventh inning on, the silence was unbelievable between pitches and after outs. You, you were roar, and then it went so quiet. I've never seen a stadium like that ever, or heard a stadium like that. Do you remember it, that silence? I felt a little bit, especially I came to bat in the eighth inning, I guess. Magley struck me out, but then they, the people threw a lot of confetti and stuff were coming down all around. It was a little nerve-wracking. Because I had one out to go, I know, and I turned around center field, and I think I said a little prayer to the old man upstairs to get me through one more. <laughs> My legs were shaking. It's a wonder I didn't faint. I think it worked. Do you think that last pitch was really a strike? Or did Pinelli want to get out one of the <laughs> Mitchell have swung at the ball, went almost through. I got the yeah, film yeah, of I got the film of it. That'd be a strike automatic today. Today, yeah, for sure. Well it was then. Throwing bad out of the corner of my eye before Yogi jumped on me. I saw Dale Mitchell turn around to argue. But there was nobody there to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> he was in my arms and Babe was probably in the clubhouse already.